السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك يا الله open the hearing channels of our hearts to your remembrance اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباع وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا الله show us truth as the truth and make us follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه يا الله make us among those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them. Allahumma anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fima kanu fihi yakhtalifun. Allahumma ahdini lima akhtalifa fihi min al-haqq bi-idhnika innaka tahdi man tashau ila surat mustaqim. Ya Allah, you judge between your slaves concerning wherein they differ. Ya Allah, Guide me and guide us in the disputed matters to the truth, for you are the only one who guides to the straight path. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to this uh, beautiful halaqa of studying together the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as always, I remind myself first and I remind you that we study this not as academics, not for information, but for internalizing and for looking at our lives in the framework of the Qur'an to see where we are following, where we are performing well, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And more critically and more importantly, we look at where we are behind where we are not doing so well and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and we ask him to help us to overcome our shortcomings. And again, everything that we study in the Quran must be thought over and over and reflected on, not just on Wednesday every other uh, uh, week, but uh, in our moments of solitude. So today we are going to study, as we have been for the last year or more, another Makkan Surah, uh, which is Surah Al-Qiyamah, which is Surah number 75. And as we have uh, noticed before that there are three main themes in the Makkan Surahs. Number one, of course, is Tawheed, the absolute oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to dispel the shirk that existed in the society and that exists today. Uh, so Tawheed is, is uh, stressed and emphasized in the Makkan Surah. Number two, the point that is emphasized is the confirmation of the messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That he is the messenger of Allah, that he is the truthful, that he is not a liar, that he is not a poet, and he is not possessed, he is not majnoon. All the accusations that the Meccans uh, were, uh, were uh, projecting on him. The third important theme of the Meccan surahs, as you all remember, is the Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment means one thing, accountability. Without accountability, people would do whatever they wanted. There is accountability and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk about that. So <clears throat> why is there such a stress and repetition over and over about the Qiyamah and the Akhirah in the Makkan Surahs? For example, let us look back at what we have already covered. We studied in Surah Al-Alaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ila rabbika ruj To your Lord, you will return. In Surah Al-Qariyah, if you remember, يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ In Surah Al-Zalzala, if you remember, يَوْمَ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتَ لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ 
on those days, the people will be brought in groups to show their actions. The one in Qari, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the day when mankind would be like moths, you know, just flitting around. In Surah ad duha if you remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal akhiratu khairul laka min al The akhirah will be better than the present. In Surah Al-Layl, which we just covered two weeks ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, last week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna, la, inna lana lal akhirata wal ula. With us is the akhirah and this, this life. If you remember a few, few months ago, Surah Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla idha dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka wa jaa'a rabbuka wal malaku safan safa. That the earth will be leveled and the angels will be lined up for the day of judgment. In Surah Al-A'la, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi yasla an-nar al-kubra, thumma la yamutu fiha wa la yahya. In Surah Buruj, if you remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alladhina fatanu al-mu'minina wal-mu'minati, thumma lam yatubu, falahum adabu jahannam, walahum adabu al-hariq. In Surah Infitar, all of it is about Qiyamah. Surah At-Takbir, all of it is about Qiyamah. Surah Abasa, which we covered within the last few weeks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ السَّاخَ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي And till the end, again stressing Qiyamah. In Surah Masad, even if you remember, about Abu Lahab, in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sayasla naran dhata lahab. He will be roasted in the fire. In Surah Muzzammil, when we studied that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladayna anka lawn wa jahima wa ta'aman dha ghussatiun wa adhaban alima. Talking about the hell. In Surah Muddathir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fa'idha nukhira fin naqoor, fadhalika yawma idhin yawmun asir. That day of difficulty when the Trumpet is sounded. And of course, in Surah Fatiha, in one ayah, Maliki Yawmiddin. There is only one king of that day. So, why is it now we have a whole surah of Qiyamah? Because, first of all, it is a matter of Iman to believe in its reality. All Muslims accept Qiyamah. But one is the academic acceptance and the other is to have the haqiqah, the reality in the hearts. And when we have the sign of that is your life should be led in a way as if you are seeing qiyamah and you are preparing for it. The second is to keep that qiyamah, not only to believe in forefront, in our thoughts, in our efforts, in our goals. And third, of course, is to prepare for it. Many times, in these, the Bedouins used to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when is Qiyamah? And what was the response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What have you prepared for it? That is what is critical. So it is, why is it difficult? Because this is what the Meccans were struggling with the most. They believed in Allah. They had other gods as intermediaries to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they could not accept that dead bones would be brought back to life. But if we look at all previous religions, whether you look at Hinduism, whether you look at Christianity, Judaism, Islam, every faith talks about something of the hereafter, right or wrong. They may say there is going to be, uh, you know, there is something we don't know, that's one faith. Another one talks about paradise and hell and salvation. Another one talks about reincarnation. So everyone understands in their faith that this cannot be it, except the ones who do not have revealed faith don't know what is coming ahead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this, yes, this is a matter of ghaib, of the unseen. This is not something that science can prove. And that's why it's a matter of faith. It becomes a matter of Iman versus disbelief. So today we are so scientifically oriented. We say, well, we need proofs. Well, you're not going to get a proof. You have to believe in it. The second thing that distracts us from Akhra and concerns for it is the love of the dunya. Because we are too busy with it. 
and we are always occupied with it. It's always in front of us. Therefore, we relegate as the Akhira to the last priority because our dunyawi attachments and preoccupations pull our hearts in so many other directions that that is left in, on the back burner. Now, there is a general understanding that our hearts are where our efforts have been made. Wherever we make an effort, our heart is attached to that. And the vice versa is also true. Our efforts would be made where our hearts are attached. So if our hearts are attached to the Akhra, our efforts would be directed to that, and that would be the proof of that. Also, we don't hold ourselves accountable, self-accountability, on a daily consistent basis, and therefore the Akhra is not real. Similarly, of course, we have our enemy, arch enemy Iblis, who is trying to distract us and says, you know, even if you believe that there is plenty of time to prepare for it, what's the rush? And lastly, because even though we face this reality every day, that we bury people every day, we keep forgetting death. Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ حَزَامَ الْلَذَّاتِ be frequent in your remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures, which is death. He encouraged us to visit the cemeteries because there is ibra, there are lessons to be learned. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, warned us, he said, if you spend too much time in laughter, which comes from entertainment, it will be a disaster in the hereafter. And if you cry here, you will have the shade of Allah's arsh, on the Day of Judgment and laughter. Because one of the categories of the seven categories that are taught by Rasulullah who will be given shade on a day where there is no shade is a person who cries over his sins in solitude. Shed tears here so you can laugh that day. So in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers some of these reasons and gives us a very vivid and stark visual reminder of this unseen event. He takes us through the journey, the reality of death, talks about the reasons of our forgetfulness once again, and to bring this in focus on our radar screens that yes, there is a day of judgment, and to keep it right in front of us in our thoughts, in our concerns. The word qiyama means, we translate it as resurrection or rising, like we said, qum. It's from the same root, which means to stand, to rise up. So qiyama means rising from the graves or standing. Okay, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when people will come out of, of their graves, they will say, who has taken us out from our uh, marqad, where we were sleeping? Now, when something is important, in the Arabic culture, in the Arabic language, it has multiple names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more than 99 names. 99 names are in the hadith, in one hadith. But he has many more names because anything that's important has many names. At least 36 names of Qiyamah are mentioned in the Quran. Let's see if we can go through some of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it al haqq inevitable reality. He calls it as the hour. He calls it as the deafening blast. He calls it Tamatul Kubra, the greatest overwhelming calamity. He calls it al ghashiyah the overwhelming event. He calls it al qariyah that striking noise, the calamity that we've covered. al waqiyah the occurrence. Yomul Akhir, the last day. He calls it Yomul Azifa, the day that is drawing near or approaching. He calls it Yomul Ba'ath, the day of resurrection. He calls it Yomul Tagabun, the day of deprivation. He calls it Yomul Talaq, the day of meeting. Yomul Tanad, the day you will be called, the day of calling. Yomul Jama, the day of assembly. Yomul Hisab, that you all know, day of accountability. Yomul Hasra. Day of regret, all of these telling different 
manifestations of that day. Yomul Haq, only truth will prevail that day. Yomul Khuruj, the day you will be coming out. Yomul Khulud, the day of eternal life. That's where it becomes. Yomul Deen, the day of judgment, the day of truth. Yomul Fath, the day of decision. Yomul Fasl, the day of sorting people out. He calls it Yomul Qiyamah, as you know, the day of resurrection. Yomul Ma'ud, the day that is promised. Yomul Wa'id, the day of warning. Yomul Waqtil Ma'loom, a time that is appointed. Yomul Asir, as we've read before, the day of difficulty, of hard. Yomul Asir, yes, uh, Yomul Asib. Yomul Asib means a distressing day. And Yomul Aqim, the day of disaster. He says, Yomul La Rayba Fi, the day of which there is no doubt. Yomul La Bayun Fihi Wala Khilal, the day where there will be no mutual bargaining or befriending. Yomul Maraddalahu, the day none can avert. Yomul Majmu'a, the day when mankind is gathered. Yomul Mashhud, a day when all will be present to witness. And Yomul Nahshim Mustamir, Nahsim Mustamir. A violent day. 36 different descriptions of day, each one adding something to it. That's the importance of this day. With this introduction, now let us begin the surah. And I hope you all have your Qurans, at least some of you, so you can follow along. The surah, as all other surahs, starts with, and I'm going to just read the first uh, Parts that we want to first cover. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La uqsimu bin. La uqsimu bi yom al qiyama. Wa la uqsimu bin nafs al-lawama. Ayhasab al-insan wa al-najma' al-idama. بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانا بل يريد الإنسان ليفجر أمامه يسأل أيان يوم القيامة فإذا برق البصر وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وزر إلى ربك يوم إذن المستقر ينبأ الإنسان يوم إذن بما قدم وأخر بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة ولو ألقى معاذيرة. so we are going to cover these fifteen ayahs first. <coughs> Of course, the surah starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And the surah itself, the warning that's coming, the reminder is the manifestation of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you were not warned about this, it would be a disaster. So it is out of the Rahmah of Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim that the surah is coming. So that you may protect yourself. And to prevent you from getting hurt and harming yourself. Then the surah starts with two qasams, two oaths, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And the oaths taken here are a little different than what we are used to. Like we would say, wal fajri, wal layli. Here it starts with a la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, la uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamah. Now, as you know, the word la means no. So does this mean, no, I don't swear? No, that's not what it means. La in a qasam is frequently used for emphasis, to emphasize the qasam that is coming. And if you remember, the people who are being addressed were denying the qiyamah. And people today, the same way, they say, well, 
there isn't something. There some others say, well, we will come back as animals and dogs, and and others. Some others say, no, we don't know what's going on, and so on and so forth. And some others say, well, if we are good, you know, we are so good here, we'll be good in the hereafter. So all of those conjectures, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, la, nay, you are all wrong. I swear. By the day, by the day of Qiyamah. So. This la, although it's a particle of negation, is used for confirmation and to negate that everything that you think is wrong. So you could translate it as saying, no, indeed, it is going to happen no matter what. And I deny all your ideas and conjectures. So this ne is a stressor. And you can also translate it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I do not need to swear by the day of resurrection because it's so obvious. Then comes the next oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala, again, same style, Wala uqsimu bin nafsil lawama. And nay, I swear by your nafs that is lawama. Lawama comes from the word laum, which means to blame. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I swear by the nafs, the soul, that is constantly self-blaming or self-reproaching. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of the other nufus, like nafsul ammara bisu, the, the always evil, the, the nafs that is always has a propensity for evil and wickedness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, as we covered in Surah uh, Fajr, uh, uh, Nafsul Mutma'in. We had a long talk about that. Uh, that's in a state of tranquility and peace and all of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to swear by this nafs. And what may be the wisdom of this? Because this is the nafs that has the highest probability of benefiting from this reminder. Because the one that is Ammara bin Su, that's always evil, no matter what you say, present, it makes no difference. And Nafsul Mutmainna has already reached a state that it doesn't need that reminder. It always has that in front of you. So this Nafsul, uh, nafsul Lawama, the self-reproaching, is, which is the majority of all, all of Muslims and others, are being sworn by taking an oath they have the highest probability of benefiting from this reminder and succeeding. So, if you are pleased with your good deeds and you regret your bad deeds, that is generally a, a person who has a nafsul lawam. Now, where does this all come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre-programmed in every human being within the genetic code the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, between good and evil. That is called the natural fitra, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us all with. We have without being taught anything. We know the difference between right and wrong instinctively. And then as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa teaches us that the parents will make this person to this, that and the other. And he gave example of Majus and Yahud and, and, and Nasara and so on and so forth. Means that they groom them in a certain way and modify that natural instinct. <coughs> now along with that fitra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also programmed within us a safety mechanism. As the blessing, as a rahma, Which is what makes us feel uncomfortable and restless if we do something wrong. And we call that guilt, or we call it guilt when we were small, guilty conscious. You know? That guilt within us is the ability to recognize that we have done something wrong. And it makes us feel uncomfortable. Now, unfortunately, in today's modern psychology, guilt is considered a negative emotion. And they teach you, oh, you shouldn't feel guilty. Don't blame yourself, which is just the opposite. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put this mechanism in us because through this, once we are equipped with this natural fitra and this self-reproaching, self-blaming nafs, this is what leads 
gives us the tools of self-accountability. That's how we hold ourselves. You know, this is not right. I shouldn't have done this. And I should do this. So we feel that. Now you might ask, what is the connection between these two oaths? One is about Qiyamah. One is about uh, Nafsul Lawam, the rhyme. Uh, besides the rhyme, now, if we look at it this way, if we listen and pay attention to Nafsul Lawama, what would it lead us to do? It would lead us to Tawbah and repentance. And in the end, that would lead to our salvation on the day of Qiyamah. A day when everyone will be remorseful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put these two connections that here's the day of Qiyamah. To succeed, you need to, to nurture this nafs that you have from nafsul lawama, even take it to nafsul mutma'inna with your tazkiyah of your nafs. <coughs> now, as we've also said, that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a qasam, an oath, it is followed by what? Jawabul Qasam. What is being stressed? Now, if you look in the surah, you will not find a jawab of Qasam. Why? Because it is so obvious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not explicit, it is implied. And I'm sure you have all figured it out. The implication is that I swear. That you will be resurrected. There is a day of judgment. That's the bottom line. <coughs> you will be resurrected. So the Jawab al Qasim is the rest of the surah, which is stressing the certainty of resurrection. <coughs> now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the next ayah the reason why insan. <coughs> doesn't accept this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّنْ نَجْمَعْ إِذَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, does man, <coughs> and this word insan is used five times in the surah. And insan is not just one. It is for all of human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, does man think that we will not be able to gather and re reassemble his his bones for a day of judgment. Najma idama jama to gather together idama, which are the bones. Because this is what the Makkans really uh, sort of used as their evidence. And if you remember from the Sira uh, series that we did, that one of the Makkan leaders came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was sitting there. He brought some old crumbling bones. And he crushed him with his hand so it became like dust, some of which even flew over Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you tell me that once we become like this, we will be raised again. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, you will be raised again and you will be entered into Jahannam. So <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing that instance and he's telling us, does man doubt? And in this, there is a reprimand. Allah SWT says, insan? Does he think this is actually a reprimand? He says, as Rasulullah teaches us, that man will be resurrected from his tailbone, what we call the sacrum, as the seed. And then from there, Allah SWT will command everything to come together. The order is just kun. That's it. It will all be brought together. Allah SWT tells us that the second creation is easier than the first. So after taking the statement of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds by saying, Bala. Bala means to negate what has been said before. They're saying you cannot create. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, saying Bala. Nay. To negate that falsehood. And as a confirmation of the truth, he says, Bala qadirina ala an nusawwaya banana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means to put together in details. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, no to your falsehood. And then he says, it is just the opposite. You deny his capability of putting the bones together. 
On the contrary, he is Qadir. He has perfect control over everything. Allah said, we will resurrect you and we will put you together in every, nusawwe every detail. To what degree? Nusawwe a banana. Banana is the fingertips. They did not know that we all had unique fingertips at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I, we will put you together in every detail, including the unique fingerprints of your fingertips. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses that. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> that after denying this, بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ amama. This is the next ayah, ayah number five. He says, the second reason is because insan yafjura amama. He follows his desires to do wickedness and he rebels. Fajera means to, to rebel, cross all bounds. He is intense in his practice of evil. This is particularly addressing the kafir. So that whatever he wants in front of him, he will continue. He wants to do without any checks and balances. Whatever wants his desire, yafjura amama. Whatever comes in front of him, he wants to do and continue doing onwards and onwards. Rebellion. Now, this is the second thing that he has so much desire for this dunya and, and the pleasures of this dunya. He wants no restraints. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he yes alu ayana yomul qiyama. And defiantly, mockingly, he says, Oh, so when is this day of judgment? Ayana is for we have two things. One is mata, which is asking when, and ayana is used for something the distant <coughs> future. So he's saying, Oh, it's so far away. When is it? Ayana. And Ayana is also used when you don't believe in something as a, as a uh, matter of arrogance and, and mocking. Means I don't really believe it's going to happen. So he said, Ayana yawm al qiyamah. <clears throat> when will this day be? <clears throat> <clears throat> and <clears throat> one of them was so arrogant, he Asked the Prophet about Yom al Qiyamah, and Rasulullah of course told him everything about Yom al Qiyamah. So, do you know what his response was in the end? He said, Even if I see it with my own eyes, I will not believe it. Now, when they ask this question, Allah SWT does not address the question of when it's going to be, He just answers it by giving signs. That's also a rebuke, you know, a scolding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you want to know where, when it is? Now let me tell you what it is instead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <clears throat> فَإِذَا بَرِقَ basar." The day when the eyes, every eye will be dazzled. Barq is like the lightning, the destruction. The lightning, the light that will dazzle you from the destruction of the universe. He gives a second sign. First sign, Barak al Basar, you will, your eyes will be dazzled, you will not be able to see. Then what else will happen? Wahasaf al Qamar. Khusuf, which is eclipse, the moon will be darkened. And the reason the moon will be darkened is not because the earth comes between the sun and the moon, but because, as, as we've learned in previous surah, the light of the sun will be finished. So when there is no light of the sun, the moon will be darkened. The third sign Allah gives of this day, <coughs> excuse me, he says, shamsu al qamar, when the sun and the moon will be brought together, will be crushed together, will be joined together. In other words, astronomical events are going to occur where planets and things that have been in orbits in their own will start colliding and coming together. It's a, a systemic collapse of the entire solar system and the universe as we know it. There will be no more source of light. 
Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ أَيْنَ الْمَفَرُ What will happen on that day? That again, every insan, every man who is there for the destruction, and this is only going to be the disbelievers because Allah will take the souls of the believers before that final destruction. What will they do when this such a calamity occurs? What do you do? You run for shelter. So what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every man, which is a disbeliever at that time, on that day will be running in panic to escape. So he will say, Aynal mafar. Where can I run to? Where is the place for shelter? Where is the place of protection? Where can I go? What is the answer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the answer. Kalla, ne, la wazar. The answer is no. Absolutely no place of refuge. There is no escape. There is no mountain cave to hide in because the mountains have evaporated. There is no fortress. There is no bunker. There is no place for temporary relief. No, there is no shelter. There is no escape route. May Allah SWT give us all tawfiq to prepare for that day because we don't know whether tomorrow my minor qiyamah starts or today or a year from now or 10 years, whatever Allah has written. But I am prepared. Wallahi, we should be prepared every day. Ya Allah, if you take me today, I am ready. And I am looking forward to meeting you. And I hope you are looking forward to meeting me. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.